So now, okay, so then I'll wait till you get back and we'll rock and we'll, okay. Happy Tuesday, everyone, in the middle of uh, the summer. It's sort of odd times, uh, kids going back to school and still not quite sure what, what month we're on, what day, but um, happy to have everyone here and a lot of people on Zoom. Um, as soon as Armand gets there, we will get rolling. Um, a lot of great things happen, and I'll share a little bit of an update on, on where we are as an office, which the momentum continues to grow, and uh, just excited about uh, where we've uh, come from and how far we've come and how far we're going. So um, pretty awesome. So um, I wanted to talk, I always take a little piece about sort of leadership, mindset, business planning. Um, I'm a big believer in planning and being prepared for success. It doesn't happen magically. It's all about being extremely purposeful. Um, success is planning for success, right? So go ahead, Armand, please. My half mask and trying to talk and drink. Um, so a dream without a plan is a wish, right? A lot of us have dreams, we have goals. That's amazing, it's great. But without actually having a plan, you're often gonna fall short. In fact, you're likely gonna fall short, right? So really creating a purposeful, detailed plan is absolutely critical to achieve those dreams and those goals, right? Um, they provide the hope of progress, right? That's what goals and dreams are all about. A lot of people are almost afraid to like aspire for something bigger. I'm a big believer in like going for it and, and knowing that you're gonna stumble um, and that's okay. You're gonna learn, you're gonna grow, you're gonna evolve, but you gotta at least strive and take that initiative, right? Um, they ignite us, goals ignite us to strive, take initiative to grow. Um, and again, we often fall short when we don't have that plan in place. Next slide, please. So um, in one of our power sessions, um, we took a book and I talked about 3D planning, right? And I think it's a great, very simple framework that we can all remember to allow us to implement a really successful plan. So it starts with defining your goals with specificity. We often talk about smart goals, specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound, always having by when dates, as I put here. Divide your goal into smaller, actionable activities, right? The, it, the plan is always about the activities that you can control, right? Focusing on the process, not about the end game. I always like to say, don't attach yourself to the outcome. Focus on the process. Focus on the absolutely essential activities that are going to get you the results. They may not always come when you want them to, when you expect them to, but they will come if you are really consistent with executing the activities, right? And then the divide is again, smaller actionable activities. So things become a lot less overwhelming and they're bite-sized and there's something you can really comprehend and have a lot more confidence that you can achieve, right? It's taking those annual goals, break them down into monthly goals, break them down into weekly goals. And then ultimately, most importantly, daily activities that you can execute every day. And then the do is about actually doing them, right? Because again, all the best theory, all the best strategy, all the best plan is meaningless if you don't execute the plan, right? So both are absolutely critical. Having the plan, having the strategy, having the, 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 the GPS, for lack of a better way to put it, and then actually following the map and following the plan and doing the actions, right? Um, it gives you clarity and it makes you realize your goals are attainable, right? It gives you confidence, it gives you clarity, it gives you simplicity so that you're much more likely to execute. Anyone uh, with any thoughts or questions or things they want to add, Michael? Yeah, well, when you have us do the business plan, yeah. you put everything into a formula. You basically start with what you want to make, and it will break it down into how many appointments you have to go on. So, I mean, I, I don't know specifically, but if you want to say you want to make 700000 a year, yeah. it's not a lot of appointments that you have to go on a week or a month. Um, yeah, and it's all about your conversion rates and, yeah. and measuring what you're doing. It's a math equation, guys. Don't like we tend to like think it's just all you know pie in the sky and we're just winging it. Like, don't wing it. Be purposeful. Be very you know focused and and know what you need to do to achieve that goal. And you can. We, we've got all the tools, all the systems right at your fingertips. It's up to you to apply them. Rhonda. KW always says the difference between a dream and a goal is a date. To give it a date that's the goal yep yep and uh again a buy when date is is critical like I, you guys have heard me say time i'm like a broken record you know if you have a goal and you don't have a buy when date it's got like it's meaningless right if i said hey i want to you know i want to do 100 push-ups 
does that mean you want to do 100 push-ups over the next 10 years? Or does that mean you want to do 100 push-ups today, right? How dramatically different does that look, right? That could be one push-up, you know, once a week for the next whatever years, right? So, or, or it mean mean 100 push-ups right now. So very, very different. I'm taking that example as an extreme, but it really is important to have a buy when date attached to every activity. Thank you guys. Yep. So again, define, divide, do. Real simple framework. Go ahead, Armand, please. Um, it must be, as, as we've just talked about, an attainable goal must be a, um, accompanied by a, uh, an intelligent plan. Identify those essential activities in our business. It's real, real simple. Once again, it's prospecting. It's proactively making outreaches, whether that means picking up the phone, whether that means knocking on doors, whether that means direct mail, whether that means open houses or most likely some combination of all those things, social media. You need to be proactively making those you know, those prospecting reaches to prospective clients, right? Real simple. It's a number one activity. Absolutely nothing else matters if you don't do that, right? Um, incorporate measurable actions tied, as we just said with Ron and I, to specific buy when dates, um, which creates tremendous objectivity. So it's not like it, it's clear as can be. You either did it or you didn't do it, right? And the data tells the story, right? That creates tremendous accountability as well. So there's no hiding behind, well, I'm not quite sure, right? It's right there in black and white. The data tells the story, right? Um, and then KPIs, which we talked about, right? Lead generation, prospecting, how many listings, uh, listing appointments did you go to? How many listings did you take? How many deals did you close? Like there are some obviously very key metrics that we should all be tracking regularly. Right. And it typically is number of contacts, number of appointments, number of listings taken, number of closed transactions. Like it's pretty straightforward. Don't overcomplicate it. But if you're not tracking those numbers like diligently, consistently, then you're never going to be as good as you otherwise could. Right. And then when you're tracking those numbers and you can then as your business planning for 2022, right, you can look back and say, I needed to make 30 calls to get one appointment. But otherwise, you have no idea if you didn't track the numbers. So you have a much more predictable plan moving forward when you've got historical data to look back on, right? And so many, again, people miss that. That's any good business owner is going to have those key metrics, and they're going to know how many they need to achieve a certain goal. So it's really clear, and the roadmap is right there for you. Anyone, uh, anything to add or ask? Just yes. You can also then see what is and what isn't working because you're tracking it. Um, you know, you can sometimes we forget, right? Yep. We're so busy, we forget what actually had the best effect. And so when you're writing everything down, you're actually saying, oh, this actually works for me. I'm going to continue to work this even more. And to Tamara's point, that is so, so critical. When you're tracking the data, it gives you far more, you're able to much more proactively determine what isn't working or not. Right. And then you can course adjust and adapt much more quickly without losing a lot of ground. Right. Because we're inevitably certain things are not going to work as planned. They may work a little better. They may work a little less. But without tracking the numbers and watching it closely, you don't know where you are or where you're headed. And you may get way off course. And if you're tracking it regularly, you're going to be able to detect that much sooner and then put yourself back on course, you know, more quickly. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, I think it's the last one, Armand. And then again, we talk about execution, right? Um, I always say the strategy is easy. The execution is where the real results come, right? But the strategy is very important. The plan is very important, but the execution is critical because again, the best plan in the world means nothing if you don't do it, right? Um, the do brings the plan to life. It advances you toward your destination. Um, and it always comes back to, I talk about it, a growth mindset, right? Understanding that effort and action are the key to it all, right? We're all born with certain innate skills, certain innate qualities, but with effort, it trumps that talent, those innate skills all day, right? So make the most with what you have, put forth the effort, have the courage to lean into uncertainty because that's inevitable. It's the only way we grow. And then just execute with discipline and consistency and get better and better every time. It's how you build skill. It's how you create resilience. It's how you create character. It's how you build confidence and credibility from others around you, right? Both within yourself and from everyone outside of you. When you see someone who's diligently doing things purposely, consistently, 
what's that? That's going to be tremendously credible to you. You're going to trust that kind of person, right? So it has so many implications, guys, but it's all in the execution and then starting out with a really intelligent, purposeful plan. If you don't have one, ask for help, right? Asking for help is a sign of strength. So ask for help. We all need help at, at various points. The best of the best don't know it all. They're going to need help and they're not afraid to ask for help. Um, anyone else, any comments, any questions? Work backwards. So sometimes vision being at your goal already. Yeah. You take those steps and think of trying to already achieve this. Like what are some of the, the steps, you know, kind of examining it out, examining it hypothetically after the fact. See like, you know, sometimes it's not about where you are or where you're going. It's like, if you were already there, you know, like how did I get here? Yeah, so it's no, I think it's, looking at, and it's, it's another way of saying what I just said. When you have data to reflect back on, you can see what has worked and what hasn't worked. And then you can hopefully move forward more intelligently the next time, right? Guys, work hard, but more importantly, work smart. And obviously, ideally, you're doing them both. And this is all about how to work smarter and how to be purposeful. We all have the same amount of time in the day. And it's amazing how some people get a lot more done than others, right? I mean, we all know that. that, that's it, right? There's 24 hours a day for everyone. How you use your time, with whom, on what, is absolutely the key to it all. And I'm always striving to like create more leverage. Leverage comes in the form of systems, technology, and first and foremost, people. There's no better investment than an investment in the right people. Believe me, you're gonna get the greatest return on that of anything in the world, right? But it's not always easy, right? And finding and identifying the right people that you can trust, that you can invest in, is critical. Any other uh, comments? All right, good stuff. All right, we're uh, we're on to the next one. So mega camp. Um, so I, I know it's been very confusing. Obviously, we've been in a little bit of a unprecedented world. But Austin's in-person mega camp, which was going to be very limited to begin with, um, is no longer happening live. It is going to be um, streamed, and I, I don't even know the specifics around that, but it's out there. I'm even I'm even I'm a little confused. But we are still doing Vegas in person. With that said, Vegas is sold. No, I don't know. It, it, I think they're no longer offering tickets because they limited the capacity. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to remind people. But that Mega Camp will be streamed, and we'll get more detailed information on that. Uh, next week. And I know there are at least a few people that are going to Vegas. And if you still have interest, I'm going to, to Las Vegas. Um, let me know. And there's there may be some ways to uh, include you in that. So um, so that's a, a confusing way to say um, there's still some form of this happening. And um, and we'll, we'll fill you in more shortly. All right, we're on to the next one. So just going over the goals through July, as we're now in the middle of August. So this is through uh, seven months. So we're seven, thir seven twelfths of the way in. Um, and you can see again, year to date, this is where we are this year. This was our goal from the beginning of the year. And this is what's the, the gap, what's left to, you know, basically it's just simply the goal minus the year to date, right? So um, listings taken were six, and this means that we're outpacing our, our, our goal. So listings taken, we're outpacing. Units closed, we're outpacing. Um, closed volume, we are as well. Company dollar, we are. And profit share, we're, we're way exceeding it. So really, really excited. Again, we've created some amazing momentum the first half of this year. Um, I just want I just want to make sure we continue that momentum. I always say in full transparency, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And um, we've got to make sure we finish strong. We finish strong. So that, that includes everyone. Um, and then if you look at uh, last year versus this year, so this is this year, oh, sorry, I don't know. Um, this year versus last year. And this is a little bit, this, this metric is sort of self-reported, so it's not always the most accurate. And um, so I'm still a little skeptical of that. But we, the only thing we took apparently less listings this July than we did last year. Um, we closed far more units. Um, we did far more uh, closed volume. We did far more company dollar. Um, and our profit obviously was like nothing uh, last year and it was over $50,000 this past month. So everything's looking extraordinary other than listings taken. And I'm a little bit skeptical of that. 
um, but I'll have more data next month to, to really give a, a more firm uh, conclusion to that. But again, great, great momentum. Obviously taking listings is critical. It's the, you know, it's the lead indicator of our business, right? You take a listing, you typically close it 30, 60, 90 days or even more in the future. So it's a great leading indicator of the health of the business. Um, any questions, guys? Any, any thoughts? Uh, I'm still waiting to see. We, we ended last month um, remaining number one in California in profitability of 105 offices. We were 19 in the country out of 826. Um, I'm still, the data for through July is still yet to come out. So I'm anxiously waiting on that. So, um, but really, really, really proud of that as all of you guys. It's not what I did, it's what all of you guys did. So congratulations to all of you. All right. Next slide. So uh, is Pele around? Yes, good. So we have an amazing in-house escrow uh, team, Cannon Hills Escrow with Pele being uh, the, 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 the chief escrow officer with uh, Shirley and, and I'll let you, if you wanna make a, it looks like we're gonna bring in some additional support, but go yeah, ahead, Pele. so I'm your in-house escrow officer. I work with many of you and I look forward to working with everybody eventually. Um, those of you that work with me, you guys know we work hard, we're always busy, and we're trying to look for extra help. So it looks like we're going to be getting some extra help. So thank you guys for your support. If you need anything from escrow, net sheets, um, advice, even if it's not my deal, I'm always here to help you. Okay. Thank you, Pele. And as I mentioned, uh, we uh, we interviewed uh, some uh, a great young lady. Uh, today and it looks very likely that you'll be joining us and that'll provide some really additional escrow support and service. So we're, we're excited about that. All right, next slide. So again, this was this was this is not up to date yet, even though it does say July. Uh, we're waiting on that, but uh, it's nice to see that in writing and I'm very, very proud of that as uh, all of you guys should be. So um, you can see 105 offices, 826 and uh, and we are really, truly um, in the most competitive market, you know, probably in the country. So, you know, um, that says a lot about what we're doing here, because quite frankly, our competition, their resources are very focused on Beverly Hills. So there's a very strong competitive dynamic, and I'm sure Brandon and Lauren can, can speak to that. So that, that says a lot about even us versus our competition. When we've got competitors that are literally writing checks to people, that, that, that's hard to compete with, but we, we, we do successfully. So I'm proud of that. All right, next. So we have some amazing cappers. And for those that are new, we have an amazing business model such that it gives every single person here an opportunity to quote unquote cap and keep 100% of your commission, right? You pay us a certain amount. In our case, it's $42,000 is our cap. And once you've paid us that in commission for the balance of your 12 month anniversary year, you keep 100% of your commission. So well, I think we've got like six or seven cappers here. Um, it's exciting to watch people do that. The goal is to get everyone to cap. And, um, and I, I couldn't be more proud of, of, of all of you guys. So um, James, I don't think he's here. I barely ever see James. He's on Jeff Yarbrough's team, but let's give James a great uh, congratulations. <laughs> All right, who's up next? Jordan Petito, I see Jordan. Come on up here, dude. We should have one of the work. Veronica. Veronica, or Josh, is Josh here? I just can't picture it. Someone can take a picture. Take a picture? Yeah, yeah. Does Josh have a camera or he can use one? Yeah, sorry, my camera. My bad camera. There you go, Mark. That's better. Ready for one. Hold on. Two. Got it. Awesome. Congratulations, Brian. Anything you want to uh, <laughs> say? Any anything you want to do, you could do if that's where you're heading. Um, we work. I work hard. I come in every day. And that's how we do it. Um, we get on phones, however you however you determine to prospect, we just just do it. Um, to the fullest and get your feet wet and uh, yeah hopefully outcome comes out of it yeah 24 years old 24 years old USC graduate bright as can be 
consistently here every single day with a, nothing but a positive attitude and making it happen. And so that's it. It's not complicated, but not easy. So congratulations, dude. And honestly, will be an absolutely already is, but like will be one of the top producers in this country. I, I mean that sincerely. So no pressure. <laughs> All right. Um, next slide. Kevin Denali. Most of you guys know Kevin, part of our ALC, just obviously a big leader in our office. Um, again, similar to what I just said about Jordan, like unbelievably consistent, um, always the first person to help everyone else. Um, success is not by accident. It's being extremely purposeful. And, and these guys both absolutely represent that. So, Josh, can you uh, grab another one? Yes, sir. Congratulations, Steve. One, two, three. Gotcha. Thank you. Good work, brother. Anything else? Uh, Planning and take action. Yep. That's it. Yep. And having a, an amazing big why behind you, uh, oh, a beautiful family. and That comes uh, number one. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good motivator. That, that's a competitive advantage that Jordan doesn't have yet. <laughs> totally good. Imagine if he has it. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Congratulations, Kevin. All right. Next one, Armand. And we're getting the new caps, by the way. We like, uh, I think we ran out of caps, but they're coming and we'll make sure we get them all caps. Um, Michael Eisenberg, congratulations, Michael. Michael uh, I don't know how long exactly Michael's been in the business, but um, just unbelievable wisdom, unbelievable purpose and focus. Um, huge producer consistently over many, many decades and just a great guy and a huge part of our office. So thank you, Michael, for your leadership. All right, next, Sean Cormandy, the land man. Uh, we saw Sean at uh, a top producer event, I want to say like maybe six weeks ago, first time I'd seen him in a long time. Um, Sean's always out there making things happen. Um, you know, he's just a great guy, does a lot in land, he does residential, commercial, um, always just making it happen. So congratulations, Sean. Next slide, Tim Gavin. So Tim's always consistently one of our top producers, has built a really successful team. I see Matt's probably on the, on the call here. Uh, a couple other guys, I'm drawing a blank on, on some of the other names, but Tim is always out there hustling, nothing but a positive attitude, um, extremely competitive, always asking me like, where do I rank in this and that, which I love, and uh, just always making it happen. Also has a very big why behind him. Uh, with a beautiful family uh, with some young kids. So congratulations, Tim. Next slide. Wayne Wong. Wayne, awesome. I don't know if Wayne's here, but uh, Wayne uh, works a lot with Laurent and their group that's growing day by day by day. Wayne's always just a great guy with nothing but a positive attitude, just always making it happen. So uh, congratulations, Wayne. Awesome, man. All right, next. All right, I think that was what, like six or seven cappers, great, great, great stuff. And I'd like to see everyone here as a capper. So I, I know several of you are, and this wasn't your, your time yet, but uh, great, great stuff. So I wanna take some time quickly. Um, if anyone wants to share any pockets, any, any wants, any needs, um, wanna give everyone an opportunity, including those on the Zoom call. So who want, anyone here want to uh, share anything? Shadia. I have a the listing. It's in Newport Coast, uh, 2,400 square feet, uh, four bedroom, four bathrooms. And it's in a gated community of Altezla. It's a very prestigious neighborhood. Asking price is 2.4, but it's a little bit negotiable. So if you have anyone, and uh, the house needs remodeling and you know renovation. So if you have an investor or end user that they can use some remodeling. That's well, did you hear that? Are you hearing this or not? Sorry, because he okay. does a lot in that area. So, um, one, one more time, Shadi, real quick. Sure. Newport Coast of Market, uh, 2,400 square feet, $2.4 million. Needs a, lead, a lot of remodeling, so it's great for investors. Oh, 
Yeah. See, that's what. <laughs> Thanks, Shadia. Great stuff. And, and you probably have you put it on internally into our uh, our social media page or for. I haven't put it in yet, okay. but I'm going to. Okay. 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 Pam. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to bring more. Hi, um, if anybody has any clients uh, that are looking to do something, they're sellers, they're sold, it's a hot market, so they have capital gain situations, and maybe they're looking outside of the United States, or buyers who can't afford in the United States and want to do Airbnb, because Airbnb seems to be shutting down in a lot of the cities, and they might be interested in northern Baja, Mexico. I have a project that you can get 25% referral fee. So if you have clients that want to look in, in, in bar house uh, and you want to get some money off of it, you're not licensed in Mexico, then uh, see me and I'll give you the contact. Thanks, Pam. Okay. Who else? Anyone? I'm looking for an off-market home up to $2 million. Um, Beverly Glen to the 405 or in the hills in Sherman Oaks. I, I actually just got a pocket listing for Sherman Oaks Hills, right under 2 million, 22,000 square foot lot. It says two bedrooms, but it's actually three bedroom, two bath, 20, right under 2,300 square feet. If anybody, it's off of Beverly Ridge Drive, yes, right off of I, Beverly Glen. And it's hard for me nope. to see who's talking. Matt Miller. Oh, Matt. If you guys need Matt's contact info, he can either put it in the chat box or text me afterward and I'll give it to you. Okay. Thank you. Great work, Matt. Chris, um, I need a bunch of stuff. Any, <laughs> <laughs> any, any land from R1 to C4, commercial or residential, we'll take a look at. Um, and then also I have a, a bunch of guys looking at retail in Santa Monica, and then I have guys, you know, all across the board in terms of office space, um, mixed use, literally anything. Um, if, you, if you're in residential, we'll, we'll take a look at any fixer, any piece of land. So please send that my way. We can, we can write offers, you know, within a day, 24 hours, 36 hours, something like that. Um, and, and no size limitation for that. You know, land acquisition can be up to 30 million, no problem. And then uh, on the commercial side, there's also no cap to budget. Um, I'm really, really hunting for Beverly Hills office, like 20,000 square feet and up, if anyone has that. So, yeah, and then also have like three or four end users, uh, two of them looking in Brentwood, one of them looking in Venice, and one of them looking in like Palisades. Brownwood, Westwood, kind of west side area. One of them is up to four million. One is up to three and a half. He really wants Palisades, and then the other is up to like seven, seven, eight million. And they want something modern. So if you guys have anything, uh, please please let me know, and I'll, and I'll happy to get you some feedback on it. JJ. Hi, JJ. 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 I have uh, two right now buyers that are looking for up to five and a half million anywhere south Beverly Hills or Beverly Woods. Right now. <laughs> awesome. Five and a half million south Beverly Hills or Beverly Woods. Cool. Anyone else on Zoom or in the audience? Yes. Yeah, I have, I have a need. Uh, Justin. One Justin. Oh, go ahead, Justin. Uh, three plus two in West. This is a need for a three plus two in West Hollywood updated up to about 2.6 West of Fairfax. If anyone has anything, let me know. Awesome, man. Thanks. Ethan. Hey, guys. So I need an off market for around three million and below, preferably Sunset Strip area. I'm going to use that for maybe a half a million or a million or two. Cool. Oh, I was also going to say, if it's not your listing, if someone else is listing, happy to pay you uh, 20% as well. Cool. Anyone else on Zoom or in the audience? Um, I'm, Gosh. Uh, I have an off-market listing. Uh, 
it's, it's a, it has very beautiful views. Uh, have a view of a driving range of a country club and has downtown view, uh, three bedroom, uh, three and a half bathroom, about 3,000 square feet house. Um, the seller wants 2.7, 2.8. Uh, it's a corner house, but um, only one side has a, another house, kind of a townhouse. Yeah, so that's it. It's near the Getty, you said, right? Yeah, it's right next to Getty. If you guys know, uh, it's, uh, it's like uh, next to Mountain Gate Country Club. And I have another one in Sherman Oaks. I think she spoke about it. Uh, she, um, it's, it's in Sherman Oaks Hills. It's getting developed. Uh, my friend Chris is a developer. So if he does a good job, the house will be ready after month and a half. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom house. And it's a very good price. Uh, it's one, he won close to $2 million. The only problem is you can hear the 405, um, can see the 405 if you enjoy looking at cars. <laughs> and uh, has beautiful views of uh, whole valley mountains. So I think it's a very good price. So the house is not on the market. So, um, maybe a, he wants to get them, uh, you know, he wants to cash it out before he gets on the market so he, he can invest the money back on a different project. That's it, guys. Thank yeah. you. You got it. I want to have your name and phone number because I have somebody else in the um, up to me. Tosh, H O S H, and I'll, I'll give you his number. Now? Or you'll text it? Text me now, and I'll, but I'll, I won't do it right now. <laughs> 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 thank you, Samantha. Okay, thank you, Tasha. I'll call you. <laughs> I have some. Yes, Roxanne. Yeah, I have a new buyer. Uh, I need an off market uh, Westwood single family home, uh, 1 million to 1. 1.5. Do you have anything off market? Westwood, you said. Okay. Yeah. Single family house, 1 million to 1.5. Yeah, it's going to be awfully difficult. <laughs> when you find that, tell me. I'm ready to move. Okay. Um, any, anyone else? Yeah, hey, Josh, I'll go. Um, I've got a listing in Venice Beach. It's Lenny Kravitz, at least Benet's old house. It's 5999, and it's a compound, um, 8,200 square foot lot. It's actually two lots. And there's two um, structures on it. The first one is a Venice bungalow, two bedroom, one bath, about 1600 square feet. And the second structure is this huge rec room. It was like an artist studio and it's 3,600 square feet, 30 foot high ceilings, a lot of glass. Um, it can be made into ADUs, um, a huge, um, can, it can be connected to the main house. So there's a tons of potential. So if anyone has anyone, let me know. And okay, there's no one's just, area yeah. motivated. Did Paul reach out to you on that, Brian? No. Uh-uh. Him. I asked Melissa. He may okay. I told you he may be interested in it. Okay. Yeah, awesome. and these guys may too. So I, I think there's it's a unique property. It's I think could be a real value for someone. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thank Thanks, you. Brian. Good work, Welcome. brother. I have a need. Oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> they can't. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, go ahead. Cindy, you're up. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I have a buyer that wants a fixer. Sherman Oaks all the way up to Studio City, Tarzana, Encino. Um, he's willing to pay cash. One to 1.5 push. Two is pushing it, but he's willing to do it. If anybody has it, please send it my way. Cool. Awesome. Shadia. Uh, I have a buyer. I have a need for a, a house, a single family home, 1,000 in Malibu on, or Beverly Hills. New construction for, you know, newer than 2010, uh, modern up to five, five and a half. We've seen everything in the market in Beverly Hills and Malibu, but if you come up with anything else that's not in the market, please let me know. I literally have post office available in the next month for five, four. Yeah. 49 square feet, brand new construction. Well, 2019, smart house, such for button. Perfect. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to you after. I'll, I'll talk to you after. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Anyone else on the call? Anyone else here? All right. Oh, JJ. This just reminds me. I have someone looking for beachfront with sand for up to nine and a half million. Anywhere? Beachfront with sand. Anywhere from Venice to Malibu. Up to nine and a half million. Try to. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Venice to Mel not not um Up from Venice to Mel Okay. Okay. Not further down. Not further down. Okay. Got it. Um last call. All right. Um, I'm going to turn to uh our title guys um and ask them a little bit for a quick synopsis on what they're observing in the market. Yeah. Um so the market is still robust. It's definitely in the last few weeks, it seems to have slightly quieted down in terms of open orders and just the amount of requests coming in. And we also look at a lot of the big listing agents out there and a lot of them are traveling, right? Just like everyone else. So we're also starting to get requests for listings coming on in a couple of weeks. All the prelims are being ordered so that they can hit the market and be ready for the onslaught of inventory that's expected now that schools are starting and parents are back to work. And so this is the time to be checked in. And we know that the numbers are gonna pour in as far as open orders and closings to follow that. So we're still coming off record type of months, just, just behind last year, which was considered record closing months. So, Anything close to last year is just a bonus. It's just kind of like a blessing that we're having this kind of business activity. So by all means, you know, if you're not doing any farming, we're talking about all these pocket listings or listings to be, you know, pull addresses. You know, Fidelity title has great farming tools to pull some predictability or algorithms around it. So you don't have to submit just everyone, but maybe those most likely to, to take action on it rather than not. Um, but this is a great time. So um, Brandon, Fidelity title, if you have questions, I'll be happy to help you out. Any list, phone numbers, emails, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. All right. I will, uh, Lauren, uh, first American title for those that don't know me. Hello. Uh, I'll back it up. This is, this is seasonal. So we're in August. It's a little bit uh, uh, light right now. People are traveling. And um, we do expect it to pick up once kids uh, before we get back into school. So September and through the rest of the year, we'll start seeing a pop. We are at still at lows in inventory. Uh, de demand or pendings are still hanging in there. Uh, although there's not quite the frenzy we saw uh, a couple months ago, it, there's still plenty of demand, uh, but we need a lot more listings. So those of you that are doing your research, if you want a good partner in your research, don't believe what you read off a cover sheet. Don't believe what you get off the MLS. Email me, call me. I will pull the information down by document. So I'll, I'll have the guys pull deed number one, deed number two. We'll get you to 100%. If it's an LLC, I'll guide you right. Corporation, I even got a foundation now. So just be careful in, in your paperwork and the way you're moving around the listing. There can be no mistakes. If you're representing a buyer, if the, if the listing agent is smart, they've pulled the title report, send that to me. If you're repping a buyer, make sure I look at it. Make sure everything's clean going forward. I don't want you wasting your time, your money, all these resources on a listing that may not go anywhere. Maybe as simple as they need to go to probate or as complicated as there's a lawsuit and they're going to be dead in the water for, for a long, long time. Lastly is uh, out in the field, you guys, you're hearing a little bit about the forbearances and now the forbearances have been extended. We know that. But what happens when the forbearances finally end? Do not believe anybody that tells you this will affect the market. It will not. In 2008, 2009, uh, during the crash, there were about 9 million properties that were either in default or went short sale. 9 million, and that affected the market. Plus, we can all agree we had kind of a financial or mortgage meltdown. We got none of that now. We got a very strong economy still. And forbearances kind of come to home and we get the final numbers. 90 plus percent of them will be worked out and get off the books. The remaining that will still will be in a, a payment plan. And the few that actually go to sale will be about in about 150,000 range. 9 million back in 09, 150 now, which will easily be absorbed by this real estate market. So don't believe that this stuff we're embarrassing is going to change the calculus of real estate at all. I'm sorry? Is it going past September 30th? Uh, not that I've heard of. And by the way, you cannot track forbearances like foreclosures. So that's a very common request we get. There's no indicator for right. who's in forbearance or not. So we don't want you chasing. Right. Uh, no, no, no. Right. Just, it's, it's interesting. just like a short sale. There's nothing in the document that says short sale. So we just don't know whether when it is or not. It's self-reported in the MLS. But we don't really tap into the MLS very much. So just just know that this isn't going to change our world really at all. Uh, I don't think so either. I had a client recently who had to do a modification on a loan. 
So, you know, they were in forbearance and they did a modification. And so what the bank did is they technically gave them some of the money off so that they can be paying and then they went into forbearance and then they forgave them this chunk of money but asked that once they sell they take 25% of the profit. Right. So it didn't actually affect them going on the market, they were able to sell it successfully. It was no So issue. that's a that's a bad a bad loan per se off the books. When that when that thing sells, you've got to be very careful about the demand, the payoff. Of the loan, does it include the forbearance amount or not? Is it going to be a separate demand? Is it all in one? Do we match up doc numbers? That's the kind of the things that we need to look at, right. and the kind of things that we'll make sure it goes right. So, um, listen, we got two big title companies here beating each other up for your business. It's a fabulous thing, guys, because you win. We got all the bells and whistles. We, we, we are independent insurance companies, so we're not the little guy in the corner selling you the Allstate policy. We are Allstate. Uh, and again, we're, we're, we're competing for your business. So it's, it's a beautiful thing that you guys win. So for the bells, the whistles, the tools, the apps, online stuff, for uh, uh, farming tips and tricks and tools, just call me, email me, let's strategize because your, your business is different than yours. Let's make sure what we're doing fits to you. Awesome. Nate, our in-house, no, yes. <laughs> Movement mortgage. Yes. Uh, I'm here in the office. I'm your movement mortgage loan officer, and I would like to get some new business. I would like to earn it too. So please abuse me, use me, call me. <laughs> uh, my phone number, my cell number is at the door. Uh, we do everything from uh, no income documentation on investment to fully uh, documented loan, informing jumbo. So let me know what I can do for you. Thank you, May. You're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think next slide, I think we're ready for our guests. I don't think I missed anything. Okay. So we've got a great panel of. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was looking for you and I somehow didn't. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. I was literally, except I didn't look that far to the right. Um, so yeah, I'm. I hate to be like the bad cop here, but everybody's got to wear a mask. It's just an office. Fit. It's not even just an office. Fit. It says, you know, statewide thing. Everyone's got to do it. So let me be clear on the policy, guys. And and is that in common areas, everyone needs to wear a mask, regardless of your vaccination status or not. Yeah, I mean, because um, we've had some instances. In your own offices, um, you're, you're okay to take it yeah. off and do, you know, so, so we just want to be respectful of everyone. Obviously, the variant, there's several people even in our own office and I have not been the best at it either. I'm gonna own that and I'm gonna be much more leading by example. Um, and um, you know, several people in our office have got, you know, coronavirus, the Delta variant, I assume, and they've been vaccinated. And so, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Just it's easy to get a rapid test um, or get a you know, a PCR test just to establish a baseline. You know, if you haven't done it in a while, I would suggest doing And look, it. it's very personal. Obviously, certain people have been impacted differently than others and their family members. So yeah. Just be respectful, even though if you're not that whatever about it, recognize that other people are. So just be mindful of that, please. All right, cool. Thank you. And um, so Joshua, tall Joshua, is uh, taking over as uh, the assistant market center administrator. So he's going to be in charge of, you know, help helping Veronica a lot and making sure that you guys get paid. So make sure your files are complete. If you're using a TC um, in the office, like Brian or Valerie, you're not going to have to worry about it. If you're doing it yourself, make sure your files are complete um, because I'm sure when you're closing on a deal, you want to get paid as quickly as possible. Make sure you're choosing the correct opportunity um, if you're doing your own folder, uh, files. Um, lease disclosures, somebody asked, you know, are there any special disclosures? Well, we have the checklist in, in command of what are required. And if you ever have any questions uh, with any sales or leases or anything, there is a lease, uh, there's a disclosure chart on CAR, um, and it shows for residential, for residential income, for commercial, for leases, and it shows exactly what you need. For leases, um, material facts are important to disclose, and the form that you could use, because it's not part of the checklist, is the seller property questionnaire form. Um, or if there's no, if it's a, a, a trustee selling it, you could use the exempt sell disclosure uh, form as well. But material facts, like if somebody passed away on the property, you, know, you should disclose. And make sure, I got a request from Brian, uh, RTC, uh, and this goes for everybody just in general, get your avids in with the, you know, if you're representing the seller, um, try to do your avids as soon as possible um, to hand it off with the TDS. 
And if you're representing the buyer, just do it at the inspections. Um, you don't want to be handing a AVID to a buyer uh, last minute uh, or before closing. So that's my uh, two cents. And, uh, yeah. and I'll make one last comment. Um, as I said, there's a little bit of a shift in the staff. Josh is going to become the assistant MCA, and Armand is going to become the agent services uh, director. So, and we're hiring a new front desk person for it. So, um, we're excited about some of these changes and people progressing. And uh, so, we're always yeah. striving to improve. And then, as I said, we're we're going to be hiring an uh, an escrow assistant as well. So, pretty excited about all that. So, with that said, um, we are going to introduce. You can take this screen off because I'm going to move. Uh, I'm just yelling to them, and I'm the one that needs to turn it off. Um, where is that? Um, thank you. So we have four amazing people. Um, let's start off with ladies first. Uh, Tamara Skadrak, why don't you come on up here? Uh, Tamara's awesome. Been with us for, I don't know, maybe coming up on three years. Yeah. Um, and have a seat. I'm going to move this over so we can move it to the middle. Um, Would you like me to sit? Just wherever you want. Um, Pick a pick a spot. Um, we have two partners, Chris Sofer and Armand. I won't even try his last name. Um, yes, <laughs> um, of the Beach Rock Group. They've got a great team. They sit over here. They're amazing. Come on up, guys. And then Merce Kahlo. Um, Merce has also been here for maybe just not quite three years. And uh, I wanted to um, let you guys learn from some people. I, I would say like that are relatively new. Everything's relative to to the business but have achieved already great success and are just four of whom I think will be and already are future leaders in this industry. So I take a lot of pride in what we are developing in this office. And, you know, a lot of the top producers in our industry and certainly in Beverly Hills are, you know, quite frankly, more senior. And we've got some amazing people ourselves here. They will not be the future leaders in this industry five, 10 years from now, especially as things change and evolve quickly. Technology, you know, the fundamentals will always remain the fundamentals to relate. Uh, everyone on mute, please. Relationships are relationships, but how you generate and how you foster and how you nurture those relationships continues to change and evolve. And uh, I take a lot of pride that the future of our industry sits right here. And these guys definitely exemplify that. So thank you guys. You're awesome, all of you. You guys inspire me. So thank you. Maybe um a little bit just a quick intro on how long you've been in the business, how long you've been here, and then I'll get more direct and whoever wants to start us off. Sure. Um, I've actually been in the business for some time now. I just working at the market. I worked in Dubai for eight years on the brokers there. And I was in London for a little bit. Yeah, um, but I've only been back in LA for about three years. Um, school here, but maybe we've been leaving for years, so about three years ago. Um, so I can tell you across markets that the game is the same. The contracts are a little different, but the clients are the same, and that every deal is different. And that really, until you start doing it, it makes us. I'm not hearing anybody talk. Is anybody else hearing? No, I think we lost them. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I think we lost them. Glad I'm not losing my hearing. Hi there. We lost them. They don't know. I'll text Josh. Um, we've been doing it for about two years now. Uh, I love it. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to go back to around me. Born and raised here as well. I've been in it for probably two years full time as well. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm not brooding you. Oh, sorry. Okay. One okay. second. Let me explain this over your head. There we go. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out the technology here. Here, move over here a little bit. Thanks, David. It's all good. I've <laughs> uh, been doing it two years, probably full time. Um, started kind of right out of high school, got my license, um, and 
14, 13, 14. Um, worked for a couple other brokers, Kenny Stevens, multifamily guy for summer. Um, got the grasp of things there. Worked for a, a luxury broker, residential guy in Malibu for a bit as well. Um, and then kind of just took those skills with my entrepreneurial spirit and my business degree and started something with this guy. Um, and love it. And tell, know, tell us just quickly a little bit about your team, how many are involved. And in- Yeah. Um, so Chris and I got together about two years ago. Then we made, um, then we brought one addition, um, which happened really organically through one of his good friends. It's a brother of theirs. Um, and then we kind of gave it a trial period. Um, it worked out really well. Um, he was kind of a, the perfect kind of third partner, I guess. Um, not full-time partner, but like somebody we would make a partner eventually younger than us. Um, didn't go to college, but is an absolute hustler um, and, and kind of is a sponge. And then after that, we organically made like two or three other additions that were also kind of referred to us and, and came to us um in a natural way and then we kind of did the same thing trial period and it worked out really well so they're standing behind you a couple of them yeah it's ethan and dalton, ethan right? and yeah. dalton. <laughs> very smart great great guys yeah Just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah yeah ethan's a recent um berkeley grad super smart guy went to uta for a little bit um then covid hit and then he realized it's not for him um killing it in the luxury kind of residential market and then Dalton comes from a family of super successful appraisers in Austin. Um, so he was able to bring that skill set. He's been doing appraisal since, I don't know, you could walk, Dalton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Helping them out. Um, so we brought, you know, we use his skill set and leverage that. And he's kind of blossoming now, has a couple escrows going um, with one of them with Mr. Jordan Petito himself. So we yeah. definitely utilize the office network as well. Yeah. And then we have uh, one uh, intern as well. Yes, who is uh, doing great stuff, honestly. He already found us a deal that we're closing on in what, what, a couple of days? Yeah, I want to say because it might get extended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on some wood a couple yeah. of days. <laughs> These guys are just totally immersed, nothing but a positive attitude, completely engaged, and they pour into their people, which yeah. is all about leadership that they've learned very quickly early on that a lot of people never learn, quite frankly. So kudos to you guys. Thank awesome you. stuff. I mean, part of it has to do with the environment. I mean, as soon as we switched up, we were in a smaller office in the Palisades. Um, and then uh, we kind of switched up at the end of last year. And then a lot of these kind of bigger things have happened in the last 10 months or so. Um, so yeah, just really fully taking advantage of the environment and the energy. The right people in the right environment. That's the key to it all. So we all help each other. That's what it's all about. So great stuff. Marse. Hey, Jerry. So I've been working in real estate for about eight years now. I kind of took the traditional route. I was in college, got a part-time job, worked as an assistant for a top producing agent here in Beverly Hills. Then I kind of burned my way up. I ran his office. I ran his team. And then about two years ago now, two years ago, I, I made the switch here. And I've been happy ever since. And, and tell us a little bit about just what has progressed just in the last, you know, year. Oh, it's been, you know, it's, it's been, it, it really has been great. It's been very, very, very busy. Uh, having a great year. I'm about 20, almost $30 million in sales this year. Uh, so it, it's been a good Yeah, but there's still a long way, long way to go. It's not even anywhere near where I, where I want to be. So there's you know, a lot of improvement, a lot of room for improvement, and we're just working on it day by day. And he's starting to build his team a little bit as well. Yeah, so. I added recently something to my team. I also started doing quite a bit of business with David. There's no one David Boyd in the office. I also added another person to my team. Unfortunately, he got COVID, so he can't be here today. But Connor so far has been fantastic. He's 25 years old, full of energy. So does a lot of door knocking and it's it's it's, it's been it's been working out so far. Love it. But that That's was that just happened about what, two weeks ago now? Yeah, probably the three weeks ago. Yeah. With Connor. Yeah. So I wanted to take a chance, you know, an opportunity. I want to make sure I give ample time. But like my 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 first question to these guys is and I'm taking a little it's like, what is your number one priority in your business? That's a broad question. Whoever wants to start off in that. Can well, honestly, relationships, um, obviously, our client relationships, but more so than anything, our agent relationships. Um, you know, market is changing and will forever change. You will see cycles. Um, if you are just starting out, it's not normally as crazy as this. 
Um, but you know, in a bidding war with offers, uh, it really goes a long way. If on the other side, there's an agent that you have worked with before, that you've been kind to before, uh, if your offer is just as somebody else's, but they recommend your face, and that, this has happened to me this year so many times, but I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> but you know, um, they recognize you, they know they work with you, they know you will deliver, and it really, really helps. So please nurture your agent relationships. They're so important. We have so many amazing agencies. I don't want to name them because their doors will never close, but we have incredible support systems. If there's anything you need, go knocking for your first. I mean, that's all I can really say. Anything yeah, I mean, I, I got to really piggyback on it. Like, guys, especially in this kind of market, especially when you're rep well, actually either side, but I'm just going to say, especially when you're representing buyers, how do you distinguish yourself? And a lot of it has to do with the relationship you have with a listing agent, right? And how you know, what kind of reputation do you have? How do you treat them? I think a lot of people just overlook that, right? Do one to others as you want have done unto you. And I, it's amazing, such a simple way to live life, but how often it doesn't happen. Like, I can't even tell you. I mean, I, I'm blown away by that. And because we get caught up and human nature is in our own selfish world without thinking about what it feels like to be on the other side. And I guess got to impress that upon everyone to have that level of self-awareness and that discipline to do that because it goes so far in our business because it is about relationships first and foremost. And your relationship precedes you, period. And if you're new, make sure you're very mindful about how you build it because it would have broad implications on your transactions and getting deals closed and all that stuff. So Tamara's point is just spot on and it's often missed. So who wants to go next on what your number one priority is in your business? Well, obviously lead gen is like number one for everybody. But on top of that, I strive to build long-term relationship. I'm not transactional. My clients are most of them are returning clients. And my goal really, if I have a new client, or an existing client to exceed their expectations that they have, I really do above and beyond. I never say that's not my job. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I do everything I can. So I'm trying to provide a concierge like service even that goes beyond real estate, not necessarily. Yes. So I'm really a one-stop shop for, for all my real So give an example of like of what that means on, on a particular deal or the particular client. No, no, good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so look, if you know, if I'm working with somebody and they need a CPA, they need attorneys, they anything and everything, I I have the contact them. I can refer them to the right people. Uh, if they need, you know, property management is easy one, for example. I need architects, contractors, everything and everything I have in my database, and I have really good relationship with everybody. So if I make a referral to somebody, they know that that's a quality referral. So sometimes I have, you know, my clients come to me for referrals that have nothing to do with this. And that feels, that feels great. It really does. Because I know they trust me and they trust my opinion, and they know I refer to somebody that that's really cool. Yeah, I think that point is so valuable, guys. Like, we often like, that's not my job. That's not my domain. Right. Well, when you have, and, and that very well may be true, but that's all upon how you, de, how you define your own job. If right. you see yourself more broadly and you see yourself as the solution for anything, you know, as much as you can do, obviously, if you don't have any acumen in that area, you don't want to overextend yourself. But when you create a broad world and you've got great, you know, referrals, <laughs> that there's tremendous value in that. They know they can go to you for anything and they can trust you and they know that you're going to provide something that's credible, that's going to deliver great value. There's tremendous value in that. I consider myself a connector. Like people come to me for everything. The more resources I have at my disposal and where I know the answers lie, the more value I have, right? So all of you guys can have that same mindset and Mercedes certainly embodies that. And that, that just creates more of a go-to for people to rely on. So I, I think that's so, so critical. And I think many of us think too narrowly and we don't think more broadly and, and, and bigger. So love that. Yeah, and to kind of touch on that point, for me, it's 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 far more about creating a business and creating a product that people want to come back to, as you said, repeat customers. And it's, you know, I feel like the kind of traditional old style of, of brokerage is a little bit archaic and isn't kind of keeping up with the times. And I think for me, the most important thing is to is to create a brand and a company that is moving just as fast as everyone else is. Um, I think, you know, obviously relationships are super important. Lead generation generation is super important. All of, all of those tactics are super important. But I think really like understanding that, you know, you're not just here to transact, you're here to really 
build a business rather than, you know, uh, you know, a, do a sale. I think that will kind of help you understand what it really takes to build something and to become a top producer. Yeah. That's kind of my number one goal. Love it. Anything to add to that? Or? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I would piggyback on, on all three of them, honestly. Um, what Tamara said, it's obviously relationships are super duper important. We take great pride in them and we uh, cherish them. Uh, I mean, without them, you know, it's kind of hard to get around, especially when you're younger, um, you you have less experience, you have less connections. The ones that you do have, especially if they're with people that are kind of significant, top producers, you got to realize you're going to see these people again in this business. I mean, the city's small, as big as it actually is, this kind of game is a little smaller. It's, you're going to be seeing the same people over the next 10, 20 years. Um, so we try to, you know, we, we work together. You know, we try to remind them, hey, we're here to, be on the same team. You know, we try to become friends with a lot of these people. Um, I would say kind of everybody, Chris and I talk on a daily basis. We'd almost consider a friend, you know, besides the vendors or whatever we call every once in a while, even then we try to kind of be friends with everybody. Um, that's one thing. And then I would say the, the value proposition for Chris and I, we want to play with big people, um, with, with big companies. Uh, we want to do commercial stuff. Um, we, we write kind of, you know, a lot of big offers so far, but they haven't gone anywhere, but we know it's going to come. And with that, um, by what I mean by saying value proposition, it's like really find how you're going to open the door to some of these, like, you know, huge REITs, these huge commercial companies, um, and banks, you know, insurance companies that, that transact, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of leveraging your network, um, and then kind of showing them deals that they haven't seen without you. You know, and that just comes from hustling and, and you know, talking to people and whatnot. And that's kind of how we've gotten the door open. It's literally just by showing them things that they haven't seen before. And then, you know, when they ask for follow up information, we, we hustle and we get it. Um, and then the, the what Mercedes said, too, it's, it's being a one stop shop, not saying no to things or thinking your job is above what a real estate broker in Beverly Hills you know, should be doing, you know what I mean? We've blown bonds and stuff like that. I mean, this morning we were cleaning out real, like what are the, the window tracks, you know what I mean? On a condo, um, sweating all day yesterday. We were there for like two hours cleaning stuff. You know what I mean? Just uh, things that, that, you know, think, you know, you may be above, like you're not, you're, and your client sees that and they appreciate it. Like they're busy. My, our clients right now are busy moving. The guy is a builder. He's got like four projects going on. We know we step in and offer even to pay the bill of the plumber to fix the toilet last minute or this or that. It's going to go a long way, far beyond, you know, that little gesture that we did for them. Absolutely love that. Hungry and humble. It's not just hollow words, believe me. Yeah. So I love that because it stands for all of you guys. And again, think bigger, act bolder. Like, don't limit yourself. So many people I see, they think way too small. They expect, they don't have any expectations. But with high expectations, you got to be willing to take action, right? Yeah. And again, these guys completely exemplify that. So my next question for you guys is like, what does three years from now look like? And, and what Number one, what does that goal look like for you guys? And then what are you going to do differently or the same, like what to, to help you get there? The sky's the limit, right? <laughs> uh, well, I actually wanted to do this last year, but COVID kind of got in the way. <laughs> I want to take advantage of my international relationships. And then most of my network really is overseas. And it's been a bit of a challenge getting them in here yeah. for investments. And I have been working on that for the last few months to make the bridge uh, and be kind of the gate for them coming into Los Angeles. And so that is my goal within the next three years um, to bridge that and have them use us as their gate into New York market. Is there anything more specifically that, that you're working on that you can yeah, show Yeah, I'm currently fits? working on a property um, in Beverly Hills. It's 15 million. I am aligned with the contractor team as well. We have a buyer buying it and we're now aligning in our. Um, our exit buyer. So we're getting the property, remodeling it, we have a timeline, doing expedited permits, and then selling it for 23. And, and, and then you're going to be targeting like international buyers for that? So or I or have that's at least 3Ds, 
3D model made, and I'm sending it over to my international buyers for an exit. This is mostly, this is just a proposal. It's just numbers. It's not even necessarily real estate for them. It's the interest rates overseas are so much lower, even lower than they are here. Um, so we're taking advantage of that and they're doing interest only loans. And so I'm just breaking down money in, money out in the time frame. Um, so just targeting different groups, I think expanding as far as, you know, I, I love doing what I do, but I also love learning what I'm learning. And I've noticed that with this job, I'm coming in touch with so many people on different areas of our industry that are really fascinating. I'm just trying to take advantage of, you know, capturing all of it together. Yeah. Love that. Love it. The international piece. Mm -hmm. Who wants that? Good. Um, for me, I'm a big proponent of data. I have a lot of friends who are coders and they work at a bunch of these startups and they're doing you know, large aggregates of data and creating AI and doing all this stuff. I want to create kind of a really new edge flushed out marketing system that collects data, uses that data to our advantage. Um, it is, you know, a, a bit of a learning process, especially if I don't come from a marketing background and, and I don't know how to code myself. So, you know, within the next three years, within hopefully the next year, I want to have a, a system that is that is running on its own, that is self-sufficient, that will continuously bring brand recognition, lead gen, and that will give me, you know, a, a lot of data that I can use to, to make my business better in terms of whether, whether or not I'm making calls, where those calls are coming in, who are those people, where are those people, and pretty much top to bottom get that flushed out. Love that. That's phenomenal. That's a big vision, baby. <laughs> Armand, can I add to that? Yeah, this is our tech junkie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, look, honestly, with all due respect to everybody in the office, I want to be the number one team in the office, you know, in the next three years. Um, I think it's doable. Um, I think with what we've got going on, um, you know, it's it's very achievable. Um, I guess we'll see in three years. Yeah. But that no, is, I, love, I love that. That's cool. Yeah. Nothing like good, healthy competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, again, one of the best things about great competitors is they, they're, they're some of the best allies you could ever have because they push you harder and sure. perpetually raise the bar. So like that's, you know, and I, I think about it all the time. I have some of my own competitors in my own little world and I appreciate them and respect them big time because they just, you know, they fuel me. So yeah. love that. And I want to create more of that here so i'm very purposeful about that there's plenty for everyone yes. believe me right. yeah yeah. yeah so dealing with higher net worth individuals and successful, successful business people what i learned from them is that they, they have a very very strong foundation but they also have multiple multiple sources of income so the next three to five years it's really for me getting into investment properties creating passive income creating cash flow getting into development side of the business and kind of branch out in that direction a little bit. And that's, uh, that really is what I'll be focusing on aside from real estate. Obviously, you know, selling real estate is bread and butter, but if you don't reinvest that money, well, that's good. That's, yeah. right? So that's, that's really, I think that's really the way to go in the long run. It's a great, great way to make money. The commission can be fantastic. You put a lot of work in, but after that, you have to use that money for something. Otherwise, you pay 40, 50 percent taxes, which and and you show your own clients the right. way in terms of their opportunity to be right. investors and developers. Right. Like when you can do that and show them that you're doing it, it's just a whole different ballgame. So I continue. I've been trying to impress that upon everyone for ages. We're in an uh, we're in like a, a top 0one percent of the, of like the country, the world here. And I think human nature is to take that for granted in terms of the wealth that sits right at our doors, you know, at our footsteps and our own clients. So if we don't help lead by example and show them the opportunities that they have to invest and develop and whatever in real estate, then we're missing a huge opportunity. And there's no better way to do that by, by leading by example and showing them the way. So I know a number of our agents do that already, but far less than I would like to see ideally do it. So um, huge value in that. And I, I love that. So um, I want to open up the questions and then depending on what kind of time we have left, I'll, I'll finalize with some additional questions. So who wants to, uh, and including in the audience, who wants to ask any of these guys some questions? Everyone silent. <laughs> Come on. No one, no one in the audience wants to ask a question to these guys. Don't be shy. Come on. Okay, I'll ask a question. Shadia. For international buyers, do you know if they are cash buyers and they're, they're you know transferring funds 
do they have to get their front seasons here or as soon as they you know transfer the temperatures so I, the big purchases right. right so in the past i had clients prefer to do cash but now since the interest rates are so low they're low internationally actually even more so like in in europe they're in a negative rate yeah. believe it or not the banks are loving you yeah. and them again paying mm -hmm. Uh, so it really makes no sense, but um, I do think that it's better for them. What they've been told me actually is that they like it getting it whatever country of origin is theirs. Yes, the money has to be better coming in here, but it's better for them if it's over there because it also goes back there. They don't have to pay the ten percent international tax if they're doing it for less than here. So uh, seasoning is not required. That's what I'm hearing, right? Like when they transfer the funds, like if they're trying to transferring internationally. They're transferring yeah. internationally from you know overseas to here, like ten million dollars or more, and they want to buy right away. Like they have to wait three months or so to season their money, or is that okay to purchase? Uh, I mean, I'm working with Dubai specifically. They don't need to. They don't. They need need to. Need to. They don't That's what I heard too. But they just want to get into cash. cash. So Same thing, you know, to buy. Right. 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 Yeah, cash is not. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, cash is king. Yeah, thank you. But even with some of the lenders. Just want to ask a question. Yeah. Well, actually, if it's a lending job, I mean, if they have a lender overseas, I mean, it's even more proof, right? No, it's not. It's like funds, not mortgage. Yeah, it's not a loan. Who else? Questions? Justin, any questions for these guys? I mean, I, I love everything that I'm hearing about the about the growth, and and what's so interesting is that everybody has a different path to get there. So that that's what that's what I think everyone should really take note on, is that there's a lot of different ways to succeed, and just hearing these examples should be pretty inspiring to everybody. I'm definitely inspired by it. So I just want to congratulate everyone up there. Really, agreed. And again, it comes back to like what I started this whole meeting with: have a plan. Like they all have a plan. And ask yourself, do you have one? You know, and again, if you don't know, no, do something about it, right? Don't just, you know, be a victim. Empower yourself and do something about it. Ask for help. There's plenty of resources. Make it happen, you know? So um, these guys, the, you know, very clear common denominators, right? They have a plan. They're not afraid to ask questions. And they take action every single day. And they're in relationship. And they're very purposeful about the relationships they create. There is infinite number of opportunities number one to create a plan to create a path as justin said and, and there's infinite numbers of ways to success so again find your path find your superpower find something you're passionate about such that you'll do it with consistency and then go do it and recognize it's going to take time like it doesn't happen overnight right and it may not happen on a fresh try or right fit. Yeah, but keep trying. Yeah, but keep trying. Like again, one of the key things here is perseverance. Like I know each one of these guys very well, and they are relentless. They they persevere. They're resilient. They keep going at it. And when they stumble, they get right back up quickly. There's no victim. There's no woe is me. It's like get back up and figure out how to do it smarter the next time, right? And again, I see so many people lack consistency. They stumble. They get disappointed. And they just, you know, they wallow in their sorrows and they play victim. And I don't see them for another five months. Like, I cannot tell you how often that happens. I, I wanted to share something. You know, I, mean, I recently heard from one of the newer agents. Um, you know, I worked with this buyer for a few months. I wasted my time. You know, I can't do this. And I thought, well, actually, no, you didn't waste your time. Let's say this buyer didn't happen. It may not happen. But along the way of being with this buyer, you come across probably many other agents. You've probably written a few offers that you wouldn't have otherwise, right? You're perfecting your craft. So I feel like as long as you are doing it, don't be so focused on what the end result is. It will come, believe me, you will catch up to you. But just keep keep doing it. Keep keep perfecting your craft, keep getting better. Your confidence will get built up. You'll meet people, you'll meet agents that you're going to want to do business with. And you may not be on that transaction, it's going to be on another one. And you just kind of keep going. 100% agree. I would say that 100%. I mean, it's all about, and we say it to our new agents too, it's just show up every day, you know, like some days are going to suck, some days aren't, but as long as you're consistent about it, um, you have to just like, you know, something bad happens, let go of it. You got to just move on. Yeah, um, we have a phrase. Just on to the next. Yeah, it's just That's on it. to the next. You know, you got to, you know, and then there's enough going on to where you, you distract yourself and you forget about it. And the same could be for you, even if you're new. You know what I mean? There's so much to learn 
um, that you could easily move on. And the monetary, you know, thing in return, which is commission. Yes, that's nice. But a lot of times it's, it's, you know, just learning other things. You got to put a monetary value on the experiences and the connections and all that stuff, the pain even um, to, to overcome it. I mean, the first buyer we had, or one of the first buyers we had that was our, you know, our bigger sale over 4 million. Um, I mean, took us on a goose hunt for like eight months, maybe. Um, we oh, probably oh, knock oh. on every door north of Montana and Santa Monica. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. We, and then the way not we, everyone's done it. <laughs> these guys have done yeah. it. That's the yeah. part. And yeah. um, it was, and it was also on a property that they originally told us, and it's a well-known team. They told us not even to bother writing an offer. And then we hung up and we looked at each other. We're like, do they have any offers? Called them back. Do you have any offers? No. All right. We're running an offer and you're going to present it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just, you know, that's just, it's just happened from kind of showing up every day and just kind of keeping our eye on the prize and, you know, not giving into the, you know, the sorrows and whatnot when it's easy to, I guess. Yeah. And they're, I'm, they're, they're in it for the long term, guys. They're in it. They're committed. There's no, you know, what's the backup plan? There is no backup plan. Right. This is that, I think a, that's B, such a key. It's pure mm-hmm. commitment. Yeah. So many people have a backup plan. They have this, that. They don't have to get it. Yeah, you're going to get out of it when you put into it. And it's not going to be easy. Believe me. But if you stay consistent, you build the right foundation, I will tell you, it does get easier. Mm-hmm. But the foundation needs to be in place and you need to be committed. Because if you're not and you're thinking about what my, you know, what my alternatives are, it, it's going to shine through and the results will show. Sorry, Armand, you're going to say No, something. no, no. Yeah. I think Chris is going to say something. Oh. No, no, no. Uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's battling through that transition in the beginning to where your business does become a referral-based business yep. and a marketing-based business. But you got to kind of build some clout um, until you get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any other questions? These guys are, it's, it's clear as to their success. And again, you know, up and coming, it's always relative, right? Relative to like this business, the top people have typically been in the business like decades, quite frankly, you know, and all these guys have not, but I, I know already they're at the top of their game and they're only elevating. So that, that inspires me and it gets me up every day inspired to help them grow and evolve because that's, you know, these guys think out of the box and they go after it every single day relentlessly. So I love that. Thank you. Josh. Thank you. Any other questions, guys, before we wrap this up in the audience or on uh, on Zoom? Michael, anything uh, anything to add as uh, last last words? Rosales? I'm looking at you. I'm good. Good stuff here. Yeah, no, I mean, Exactly what Tamara said, when you go out and you do this every day, you just become better at it. You learn, you know, the newer agents, write the offers, go, you know, and ask, you know, ask for advice, ask to, um, you know, I just, all good stuff. Yeah. The people that are most in action are the ones that succeed. I'm just going to make it real simple for everyone. Write offers, write offers, write offers make calls, knock on doors, ask questions, just <laughs> thank it. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, anyway. Um, all right. Last call. Everyone's good. All right. Thank you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> let's go, baby. Well, uh, we saw five minutes in the let's go. We're gonna get an eight million escrow as well. We're gonna get a little eight million escrow. Let's go. Twenty million back then. Let's go.
Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Love <Love-lovers. laughs> <laughs> Your staging you. is like that too. Yeah. Nice. I like to do that, but mostly I yeah, mostly I uh, use the light color and you know do some big colors like potion, tables, you know, art. <laughs> I gotta No, no, we don't know. We already the rest. Can you are are you gonna be on time or I just kind of like are you coming early to help hold and play or are you just like and will you be there in time for the time? So don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.